Okay, so a lot of people have been asking for my answer to the current meta change, what with the 20% PvP damage buff, um, and the answer is here. So I am using 4-piece Alpha Bridge. This is my current PvP build. You know, it changes every day pretty much, but right now I'm liking this build. It functions pretty well, uh, and I'm using it. It protects me very well. It's fairly tanky, you know, up over 430,000 toughness, which I think is good. Utilizes 2-piece Final Measure to be protected from Sticky Bombs, which a lot of people have been asking me to incorporate more. I do a lot of builds that don't actually have this because I don't run into sticky bombs all that often. I feel like they're not, you know, as prevalent in the Dark Zone as they were and that even when I encounter them, I'm pretty safe. But with this build, I will absolutely not be dropped by a sticky bomb, so it's really nice to have. Uh, I'm going to talk about all my gear set pieces, my guns, my talents, my skills, and then I'll throw it to a little bit of gameplay. I really don't have much to showcase this build. I'm pressed for time, actually, and the weekend is going to be really booked up for me. So I'm actually not going to have much gameplay to show you. I wish there was more, but, you know, this build is going to function very well, and for people that you use the aiming skills uh, better than I do, you're going to get a lot more out of this build than I do. So, you, you know, this is a showcase of what the build can do, but it's not a perfect showcase of a min-max version with, you know, uh, someone who's a professional on the sticks behind the wheel controlling it. So keep that in mind and uh, take it with a grain of salt. So talking about my alpha bridge first, I'm going to talk about my chest piece. Uh, great armor roll, great EDR roll. Now the EDR paired with the final measure, since the bonus that EDR gives is not linear, actually, uh, after 50%, every percentage means more. So the fact that I have 14% on top of this and get to 64, you know, just for my chest piece and the two-piece final measure, means that I'm really extra protected. If you just had the 50%, there are still mechanisms to drop you with a sticky bomb. I actually showcased that very well with a, a Centition build that I did, where you can triple mark a target and drop them right through final measure, uh, you know, if you do it properly. With this, you're actually going to be much more protected. So having at least one piece of exotic damage resilience gear on top of the, the two final measure is going to be a really solid way to go. Major attribute on your chest piece should always be armor to achieve that armor cap, so I like that very much. You know, it's very helpful. Uh, ammo capacity, not really relevant, but I like to have it. And pulse duration is really nice. The skill attribute is augmenting my preferred skills quite well. Uh, med kit capacity, you know, that's nice from the, from the Alpha Bridge. For anyone that doesn't know what Alpha Bridge does, health regen is nice as well. Really not critical to anything. But then the fourth bonus is what matters. If your primary and secondary weapon is of the same category, they both gain all of the unique active talents. There's a really, there's a huge amount of customization available with Alpha Bridge. Not only is your gear coming into play in terms of what you prioritize there, in, you know, major and minor attribute categories in terms of main stats, your guns and all six of those talents matter. And there's just almost an infinite number of, of skill pairings, you know, gear pairings that can go with this. So Alpha Bridge just brings a whole new level of customization and control over what your build is actually going to do and the niche it's going to fill. So I really like Alpha Bridge and I, I would prefer to do a bunch more videos on Alpha Bridge, but I'm going to try and expand, you know, I won't cover it too much, you know, all at once. I'll try and interlace videos about Alpha Bridge and, you know, different talent com combinations on guns and things like that. So then talking about my mask, I rolled skill power, really great, uh, you know, stamina roll to couple with that. The skill power roll is a little bit lacking, but this is a really solid roll all around for a mask, especially in terms of gaining some stamina, gaining some toughness and being more tanky. Uh, disorient resistance doesn't really seem relevant in most PvP situations. I would prefer to have something more relevant, but at the same time, that's a really minor thing to, to be worrying about. First aid ally heal helps when you're in a squad, but I would prefer first aid self heal or pulse, you know, something that's really going to augment my own personal play style, you know, because you're not always going to have a squad. I am blessed with the fact that I do often have people to run with, but a lot of players don't, so focusing on first aid self heal uh, on most of your, your attributes is going to be a really valuable thing. It's going to make your, all of your healing mechanics much stronger. So moving on to my pads, uh, Alpha Bridge knee pads with critical hit damage. I did not need to roll armor in order to achieve the armor cap. I was very lucky with my armor rolls on the other gear set pieces that I have in order to achieve that. So major attribute on your pads, if possible, should be critical hit damage. You know, if it's not possible for you to achieve the armor cap, you know, or, or at least very close without it, without rolling armor here, then you can do that. You know, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world at all. But I would advise going critical hit damage if you're prioritizing weapon DPS, you know, in your build. Um, this is a really great stamina roll. I like that a lot. You know, it has burn resistance. It doesn't have shock resistance. I'm starting to really, you know, gravitate towards shock resistance as something I use most of the time. So I really wish it had that, but, you know, no dice there. First aid ally heal. Again, this makes me a little bit more of a support role in some senses that my, my first aid ally heal is, is buffed up quite a bit by a couple different gear pieces. So that's nice, and I, I am a valuable asset to my team, not just from a solo DPS perspective, but also from, you know, the, the team medic style healing perspective. So I do like that. 
Uh, moving on to my gloves. Now, I used to have double stack gloves. That was a glitch. It has since been changed, but I like these gloves a lot. They are a really solid roll. So I have 741 firearms, really great roll there. Uh, I have the magic trio is what I call it for major attributes on gloves. You know, 36% critical hit damage. 6.5% uh, critical hit chance. Those two, uh, I would say, if you're going for weapon DPS, always get those. And then the primary weapon damage type of your choice. I'm using assault rifles, so I have assault rifle damage on the gloves. If I were to be using an SMG, I would want SMG damage on the gloves. Marksman rifles, same deal. So you always want that that magic trio right there. That's going to do the, the absolute most to boost your, your primary DPS. Out of all the gear set pieces, your gloves are the best way to boost your DPS with a good roll because those major attributes, all three, couple very nicely with, you know, weapons and boosting their overall damage. Uh, actually, I'll talk about the, the skill attribute really quickly. Support station duration, doesn't matter for me, uh, and, you know, that's irrelevant to the build, so just to cover that quickly. Now talking about the two-piece final measure to get that 50% EDR. Really great, you know, firearms roll on this, a good uh, armor roll. This could very well be skill power if you want to prioritize your heal, make that more effective, make your pulse more effective. I used armor to allow me to use weapon DPS on my pads with the critical hit chance instead of armor on my knee pads, but you can swap these around. You can go instead of you know critical hit damage on your pads, roll armor there, and then roll skill power in your major attributes here. That'll actually boost <coughs> your overall uh, skill power by quite a bit up into the 25,000 range easily, and that's going to make your heal more potent, you know, your pulse more potent, all these different things. It's going to recharge things quicker, so that's a very viable option as well. I like ammo capacity, you know, uh, oftentimes I do switch to an entirely different gear set in order to, to ammo up, but when I don't, it's really nice to have a few pieces with ammo capacity, so when you're just, you know, you're pressed for time, you can go in, grab ammo, and then just go out real quick. Uh, pulse duration is nice, turret health is irrelevant, pulse duration is good to have if you're running pulse, and, you know, but first aid self field the most valuable attribute yet again. As you can see, ticked off the 50% exotic damage resilience, and overall with 64 coupled with my, my chest piece, that's going to be really helpful and protect me completely from sticky bombs. Moving down to my holster, this is, you know, the most important primary stat to roll, primary attribute, I should say, on a holster is armor, okay? You're always going to want to roll that. There's no better alternative. Um, if you're not rolling armor on your holster, your build is going to suffer substantially because of that. So I would say always, you know, find holsters with armor or re-roll it to that. I have a great stamina roll. That's why I like this holster a lot. Um, again, it's a 268 piece. I got lucky with this. You know, good firearms roll and a great electronics roll. Uh, pulse critical hit damage. So this is nearly a perfect holster for me. Uh, the pulse critical hit damage pairs nicely with what I'm trying to do with the build, you know, the mechanics of it. So, moving on to my weapons. Now, this is where the build gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, I'm using this Black Market AK-74. It has Vicious. Now, some people don't like Vicious. I like Vicious a lot. I think that any good squad in particular, and any good players, most of the time going to be operating within their overheal. If they, you know, they can prioritize their heals correctly and time them correctly, they're going to be operating most of the fight within that overheal, and that means Vicious will be active. So I like this a lot, and I'll discuss a little bit more, you know, the synergistic qualities that it has with the build overall in a second. Destructive, uh, I was, you know, there were a lot, of, a lot of feedback that I got on the weapon, you know, talents top 10 that I did. And destructive was probably the primary one where people are like, you need to put this in, this is one of the top 10. You know what? You're right. And now I do incorporate it into most of my builds uh, when possible. It does have a huge effect on NPC PvE content in general. Uh, in the Dark Zone against other players, I have heard a rumor that they're going to implement, you know, armor penetration and armor shred. I don't know if that's true or not. If you do have information on that, please post it in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Uh, so destructive, you know, may become like a hyper-relevant PvP statistic as well. But right now, it just really helps with PvE. And I have it on there in case I'm going to be fighting NPCs in the Dark Zone, which is always going to happen. The Dark Zone is overcrowded, and, you know, you can't really avoid them. It has skilled in the third slot. I like this a lot, and it's going to pair really well with the fact that I'm not going to be using the damage reduction signature with this build. I'm going to be using the damage increase signature and recharging it super fast. Uh, brutal, deadly, and adept on my secondary weapon of the Scar L that's down there. I'm just going to talk about them on this weapon, though. Brutal and deadly, obviously, I chose those because they're going to pair nicely with any critical hit style build. They pair nicely with each other as well, and they're going to boost the overall damage. If you can land those headshots, it's going to be a, you know huge damage output potential. Adept pairs very nicely to counteract uh, the Vicious Talent up here. So paired between them, if I actually pop my heal skill, get my overheal, I'm actually going to pair 8.5% uh, with 14%, get up to 22.5% critical hit damage for eight for 5 seconds. Now, I'm going to be popping skills pretty routinely. Uh, I'm going to pair that as well with the fact that if I'm below full health and I, you know, I pulse a target, I'm going to achieve crit cap not only with the pulse but with this 8.5%. So... Basically, this build is operating at the critical hit chance cap at all times, or at least very close to the critical hit chance cap. 
I like that a lot, and I think that with an assault rifle, achieving that is, you know, it's a really fun style of build. Now talking about the, the modifications I used, it's important to mod your, your assault rifles correctly, considering that a lot of them have, you know, bad recoil, um, stability is not that great, and accuracy as well. So you got to mod them properly to get the most out of them. I use magazine size and rate of fire, got really lucky with that roll. I like this magazine a lot. It pretty much goes on every, you know, gun that I'm trying to up to its maximum potential. But the real mods that matter, you know, the optic scope, headshot damage, critical hit chance, that doesn't matter as much, but that's a really good one for boosting DPS. The, the mods that matter the most are the large muzzle brake and the large underbarrel. I went for stability and critical hit damage on the muzzle brake. I chose this over accuracy because, uh, you know, the AK-74s have a tendency to jump around with each shot. The stability helps tremendously with that. And then for the underbarrel, I went for accuracy and stability. Don't just go by the meter DPS. If it, if it says accuracy and hip fire accuracy, it's really going to boost your, your sheet DPS by a ton. Uh, and that's inflation. It's not real. So go for accuracy and stability. You know, it is going to help your shot grouping. Uh, it is going to boost the meter a little bit because of the accuracy, but I think that's fair. And then the stability as high a roll as you can possibly get. Pairing both of these stability rolls together is going to allow me to control this gun very well. So that's the guns that I'm using. And now I'm going to talk about the abilities really quickly. I only had this uh, sticky bomb on because I was, you know, getting some supply drops very recently. But you're going to be want to, you're going to want to be running pulse, you know, for that 25% critical hit chance and the 59.5% critical hit damage on, you know, because of my skill power. That's what I have. And then you're going to want to run heal with overdose. You know, it's not a massive heal. The self heal is only 36,000. But as you can see, the the ally heal is augmented nicely by my gear. So I'm healing my my teammates for 42,000. So that's nice to have as well. And it is a good style of burst heal, and it's going to help you tremendously with survivability. So that's what I would suggest to be running. And then for your signature, again, I was getting supply drops, but normally the build would be running Tactical Link. Now, this recharge is extremely fast, okay? The cooldown is 660 seconds, but that is actually, you know, decreased every time you get a headshot kill, not only because of skilled. That actually happens intrinsically because of, uh, you know, the signature skill and the way it works itself. But when you actually have skilled on your gun like I do now, I'm going to be able to get headshot kills on the overly abundant, you know, NPCs in the Dark Zone and recharge this extremely quickly. So in the end, I'm going to have this for a lot of the PvP encounters that I get into, and the damage buff is extremely powerful, especially with the increased 20% damage that we're already getting to players because of the patch. Uh, you know, this has become even more potent. You can do massive amounts of damage very quickly, and you extend, you know, because of the way the skill functions itself, uh, you extend the duration by every kill that you get. So sometimes you can actually bounce from player to player, kill them all, still have your signature active, and then by the time it wears off, you're almost full, uh, halfway to fully recharged on that signature. This all depends, you know, entirely on how good you are at aiming, if you can hit those headshots. I can't do that very well, but some people with really good aim are going to have a huge amount of utility and yield from this build. So, that's going to be about it. I'm going to throw it over some gameplay. You know, I'll talk over it. Again, it's not very much gameplay. It's not very good gameplay, but at the same time, um, it was, I, I did my best and I'm pressed for time. So, we'll kick it over there now. Okay, so here we go. Um, this rogue right here is just going to show the damage output. You know, headshot crits are going to be 8,000. This is without pulse active. As you can see here, pulse was actually on cooldown at the time. So when I do pulse, it's going to be well, over, well up over 10,000, you know, for headshot crits. This is without the signature skill active. If I had popped it, I would have bursted him down immediately. Um, you know, the build functions quite well. I do like it. It's one of those, it's not a glass cannon. It's plenty tanky. You know, you can survive stickies. You have an, enough toughness to survive, you know, player gun DPS and stuff like that. You can counter the shotguns, they're not going to be able to one-shot you in pretty much every scenario. And when you do go rogue, you, you do decent damage. Now if you pair your skills, as you can see I pop Tactical Link, and I start to do just massively increased damage. Those were body shot crits of 7,600. Headshot crits would have been, you know, substantially more. If I could have landed those headshots, I would have actually dropped both of them very quickly. Um, I didn't, you know, get the bonus length on the Tactical, you know, uh, Link signature on that because I couldn't kill him during the duration. But anyone who's much faster with the controls than I am is going to have a huge yield from this build. Um, it's just going to function really well. So as you can see, I melted him down immediately. Uh, I, I extended the duration of my signature, started to melt him. You know, the si signature is still active because I got the kill. He wasn't really expecting it. You know, huge burst potential with pulse and your signature active. Um, every time you're using a skill, you're getting that critical hit chance. Uh, right now, if I use this skill, I'm going to go back to full health. You know, I got dropped again, but I'm getting that 8.5%, you know, from Adept, uh, as well as every time I hit full health, getting that Vicious proc again and using that critical hit chance. Uh, I really like the build. It's not my favorite. As you can see, I did get dropped. You know, they were using some pretty powerful shotguns, but I actually kind of blame that NPC, that purple shotgunner. 
I feel like he shot me and did a, a huge chunk of damage as well, which is, you know, it's going to happen. It's a routine thing in the Dark Zone, and that's another reason why I have Destructive on my gun, because when I am encountering those NPCs and I have to burst them down quickly, I get that bonus armor shred, and it's essentially, you know, 18 or 19 percent increased damage to the NPC for the majority of their health pool, so that is really nice. Um, as you can see, the pursuit capabilities are okay. I don't do massive damage. You know, with two submachine guns, maybe you can find a better combination, get more, you know, damage yield out of the build. But it does function quite well. As you can see, I'm popping my signature, uh, starting to do a lot of damage. You know, melted one target, melted the second target, and when I kill him, I extend the duration by a large chunk. Now, if I were to get headshot kills, this would give me a huge chunk on the, on the signature skill resource and recharge it very quickly. Um, and we ended up dropping all three of these players. Um... It is a great build, you know, it's a high damage build with some survivability, it functions quite well, uh, some more players showed up here and we ended up dying, it was a really fun encounter, you know, much more dynamic than some that we get into, they did have some shock turrets, you know, we repositioned, and in the end we died, but it was it was a really fun encounter, I'm okay with dying uh, to, to other squads, especially if I put up a good fight, so really no complaints from me here, uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. But, you know, if you enjoy the build, you know, please share it around. I do try, I strive to produce the best content that I can. You know, uh, one last shout out for the t-shirts. I promise I'll stop doing this and spamming you guys with, you know, notifications soon. Uh, they are going to function as our sort of VIP OG supporter type deal. Uh, I'm never going to offer these shirts again. There will be other shirts and different things and different events. But these are, you know, the original. You supported the build since pretty much day one. Or, sorry, the, the channel. Um, and... Uh, there, there is a discount down in the description so go ahead and click that link to get 15% off it's the most I could offer and it really does support the channel so thank you and you know at events and things like that if we start going and holding you know special things you know events for our members those are going to really be a symbol of you know OG supporter you, you were here since day one so thank you to all my supporters it really means a lot uh, um, the mics I actually had a question about that uh, the mics are in the mail and I don't know when they're going to get here but sometime next week and I'll immediately start to experiment with those up the quality of the recording uh, the channel's growing at a really great pace. I couldn't be happier. So a huge shout out to, to ikmultimedia.com. I'm going to start to you know put them in the sponsor list. You know once I get those microphones and start to test them out. But ikmultimedia.com was really kind enough to send me those, and I really appreciate it. So also the Facebook community down in the description is growing really great. Anyone who has a, a hard time grouping up and a hard time completing content, feel free to check that out. A moderator will approve you, and hopefully you can get a squad that you you know synergize with, and you can start to complete content and get more enjoyment out of the division. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Sorry the video went on a little bit long, but there was a lot of announcements to make. I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a nice day.